by saying I'm a 22 year long relayer. I'm just, I'm just lucky enough that my day job is to be in research for the American Cancer Society because it means I get to think about all of these things and that relay research partnership all the time. But really, quick show of hands, how many of you, when someone says, how does my donation make an impact through research? How, how many of you feel very comfortable answering that question? Maybe about half the room. What I'm hoping to accomplish today is just to give you a flavor of the breadth of the research that we do because it goes from basic biology and scientific discovery through prevention, early detection, treatment, survivorship, and policy research so that we're really impacting the entire cancer continuum. And hopefully you'll come across a few tools that you can take in terms of how to tell that ACS story even if you don't have access to a researcher to share that story. So most people know that we're funding research across the country, but what most people don't realize is that we do that as the largest private non-governmental funder of cancer research in this country, and that's because of the dollars every one of you helped to raise. So you saw in that video some really out of the box kind of thinking, some, some risk taking to come up with new answers. And then there's work like studying how our own immune system cells can be programmed to fight cancer cells. There's really innovative work happening through our grant funding. But what even more people don't realize and didn't realize really until we started to tell that CPS3 story is that we do research as well. In fact, we're the only nationwide not-for-profit that does research in addition to funding it. And that, again, is because of the dollars you raise. So one part of that portfolio of research that we do focuses on understanding how big is the burden of cancer. So every time you hear on the news or read in the paper that it's expected that there's 1.6 million people that will hear the words, you have cancer this year, that comes from the research that we do. But it's not just about understanding how big the burden is, but where is the burden the biggest? And you can see here in this map, there's three hot spots. That's some recent, recent work that was done to identify hot spots where colon cancer death rates are higher than anywhere else in the country. And what that provides us then is a roadmap to target the cancer control efforts in those areas so that we can be even more successful in delivering on our mission. And of course, most everyone has heard of Cancer Prevention Study 3, but it's a legacy of studies that represents the research volunteer partnership dating back to the 50s. It just looked a little different back then than it does now when it comes to Relay for Life. But this partnership has yielded hundreds of scientific discoveries around cancer prevention. And I'm just gonna give you one example of that. It was the first studies back in the 1950s that provided evidence on the link between smoking and premature death. But CPS1 and CPS2 over the decades that followed built on that evidence and we have been central in the contribution to every Surgeon General's report dating back to that first one in 1964 on tobacco and health. And we continue to be a leader in this tobacco research. But with CPS3 now, we'll be able to look at new things in the tobacco epidemic. Things like, what is the impact of e-cigarettes on health? Or, why is it difficult for some people to quit and it's easy for some people? Well, can we actually take those blood samples in CPS3 and look at different genes that may predict for your level of addiction and find targets to intervene and help people quit more successfully? But it's not just about the causes of cancer. As Steve and many others have mentioned, 14 and a half million cancer survivors celebrating more birthdays this year. And the Behavioral Research Center focuses on understanding the physical and psychosocial impact of a cancer diagnosis on survivors and their caregivers. So we really want to understand quality of life issues. What are the long-term issues after treatment? A lot of survivors talk about chronic pain and fatigue. And we also want to understand what do we tell survivors when they ask the question, what should I be doing to live a long and healthy life after this cancer diagnosis? The research that this group does focuses on answering all of those questions. And some of that work is actually done through CPS3. 
When I would go around to different relays during enrollment, everyone said, I'm doing this for this person, or I'm remembering this person as I enroll. So it really represents stories of hope, honor, and remembrance. But just because we finished recruiting this newest study population doesn't mean we should let these stories go from within our communities. We should integrate and take the science that we're doing and weave it into every one of those stories in every one of our communities. So if you see a headline like this that was a finding from CPS2, that's ammunition in your hands to go to your constituents and say, here is how the American Cancer Society is using some of your research dollars to make a difference for every American and beyond America worldwide. When we think about our nutrition and physical activity guidelines, our screening guidelines, every cancer control program or advocacy effort that we have underway, the scientific evidence base comes from the research that we do. Think about every one of those calls. We're the most trusted source of cancer information. That information is evidence-based because of the research that we fund and that we conduct. But it's not just stopping there. We have programs like the Patient Navigator Program and a variety of other programs and services that we provide to help people when they hear those words, you have cancer. We know, for instance, from the research that we do that completing your treatment in a timely manner is the most effective way to ensure you will survive that cancer. So we have a Patient Navigator Program that helps you through that process. Our statistics and evaluation research program, they actually look at how effective is this program in delivering on what we hope to be delivering on? Are we doing a good job? Are we doing the best job we can? And so we're evidence-based in our program delivery as a result of our research program as well. And I don't have to tell you the importance of our advocacy efforts through ACS CAN. Individual change is definitely something that we need to do. We all need to be role models for what we know reduces cancer risk. But policy change is essential to bring cancer control, un to bring cancer under control in this century. So when we think about that policy research, we advocate for smoke-free laws. If you live in a community or in a state that has smoke-free laws, it is because of research that comes out of this group as well as other programs at the American Cancer Society. This group has done a lot of work on the affordability of cigarettes and shown that the less affordable a cigarette is, the less likely someone is to buy it. Make it too expensive, fewer people are gonna pick up the habit. That work then fuels the lobbying work that we do to increase tobacco taxes. So if you had a successful advocacy effort to increase tobacco taxes in your state, you can thank that research underlying that advocacy effort. And last, but certainly not least in this research story is each and every one of you, what I love to call the power of purple. We have to work together to share these research stories and hopefully in your mission breakouts, you'll get some ideas about how to do that even if you don't have access to a researcher in your community. But the bottom line is the work that we do is not possible without the life-saving funds that you raise. For me personally, I think about the fact that we have about two and a half million vials sitting in freezers that look like this, that represent the 300,000 people in CPS3. And I think, how many of the answers that we're looking for are in one of those vials? And will we, we, be, will we be able to find them? The bottom line is not without the funds necessary to do that research. So this really is a life-saving partnership. I wanna end with a simple thank you. Um, these post-it notes, they're not spelled out in CPS3. They're just stuck all over my walls. They're actually some of our CPS3 relay chairs that, host, that hosted enrollment in our final year and they wrote their reason to support CPS3 on them and I brought them back from the training and they're still up in my office today because they're a daily reminder of why I need to work as hard as I do and why my colleagues work as hard as they do. But as I said, 18 years as a researcher for the American Cancer Society, 22 years as a relayer, I have my own reasons. My friend Meredith heard the words, you have cancer, when she was 38 with a five-year-old, and she is just celebrated her fourth anniversary as a survivor.
I think about my friends and family, a list far too long that have lost their battles. And these are my nieces and nephew. I just had to come up with a reason to put a picture of them because they're so cute. Um, but I fight back for them because together we can finish this fight for them. Thank you so much.